Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod Sleep Stories. Today, we're going to take a relaxing journey of cosmic wonder beyond our atmosphere and deep into our very own solar system. We will dance with the stars and touch the surfaces of distant planets. Before we sail into the magic that is space, let us find comfort in the space we are in, here and now. Lie flat in your bed and allow yourself to sink into the mattress. Isn't it so nice to lie down in a place where you can truly relax? There is nothing to do but allow your body the restful night of sleep that it deserves. With every breath you take, imagine your body becoming weightless, like an astronaut in space. Picture all the tension and pressure melting away from your muscles. Imagine the muscles in your neck relaxing. Feel the instant relief that washes over you as those muscles sink into the plush pillow underneath you. Now, picture yourself floating above the bed effortlessly, your back and shoulders fully unwinding and giving you a wonderful sense of relief. As I begin my story and we sail through space, carry this weightless feeling with you and find comfort in it. Your body deserves to feel complete and total relaxation. And tonight, that is possible. Now that we have taken a moment to unwind, let us begin our exploration into our cosmic backyard. Imagine yourself in a small, cozy pod you're laying on a plush mattress, so comfortable and inviting that you feel as though you are being cradled by a cloud. The pod is full of soft, warm fabrics and touches of deep mahogany wood that almost make you feel as though you are in a cozy cabin on a cool winter day. Above you, the vines of several leafy plants all entwine with one another, painting the ceiling in wonderful shades of green, a mosaic of nature before your very eyes. But to the right of you, the real beauty can be found. There is a curved window that spans the entire pod from the floor to the ceiling. Beyond the window, you see it, a blue sphere in a sea of inky black sky. It is impossibly beautiful, spinning ever so slowly, like a living marble, crisscrossed with swirls of white and puffs of cottony clouds. In the midst of all the blue, there is a collage of colors, the vibrant greens of the Brazilian rainforest, the rusty reds of African deserts, the sepia mountain tops that somehow seem so small now. This is our home, and from here, it is almost more beautiful than it has ever been on the surface. You're hovering hundreds of miles above Africa, watching in wonder as nightfall sweeps across this perfect little globe. You can see historic cities across Russia, India, and China come to life with lights. Each cluster of lights glowing like fireflies in a jar is another city, 
hundreds of homes all standing together, reminding space that they are there. In the sunlight, you can see a world that looks entirely different. There are brilliant swirls of white that feather against the atmosphere, spiraling in mesmerizing patterns across oceans and continents. Between these hazy blankets of white, you can make out the topography of the surface. You can see the Mediterranean Sea, with its marbled streaks of blue and breathtaking turquoise strips that wind around the edges of Greece and Italy. You can see the ripples of the Atlas Mountains below you, and in the distance you can see the sloping rise and fall of the Swiss Alps, their white and granite peaks practically sparkling against the evergreen ground below. For a moment, a sense of longing and wonder washes over you. You place your hand against the window and feel the cool touch of the glass. You gaze out at the sparkling lights of one of the cities in Asia, thinking about how many people are going about their daily lives there. There are people getting married, people having the best night of their life, people curled up, watching movies on their couch. If you move your eyes to the left, you find yourself staring at a mountain range. There are towns and villages tucked into the darkness there. You imagine peaceful families farming in the day and resting in bed, listening to the sounds of nature at night. From here, the world seems so connected. The lines of countries and continents all blur together until they are one, all sharing the same purpose all sharing the same space in unity. Think of all the wonders just on the other side of that atmosphere, the lush forests, the simplicity and resilience of the stark white arctic, the winding rivers, and the valleys overflowing with wildlife and vegetation alike. How fortunate we are to live in a place that provides for us so abundantly. Truly, we are fortunate for more reasons than one. The Earth is the only planet in our vast solar system that is able to sustain life. We are around 92.3 million miles away from the Sun, the perfect distance to provide us with the warmth, sunlight, and most importantly, the energy that we need. Our atmosphere is made up of six different layers, composed of the perfect mix of nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and several other elements that work almost like a jacket. These layers trap in the sun's energy, creating a perfect environment to sustain life. Much like a jacket, these layers also keep harmful things away from the Earth's surface, ensuring that UV rays and meteorites stay at bay. Every element of the Earth is in serendipitous union with one another. The atmosphere keeps us protected and creates a habitat where plants, animals, and microorganisms can live with everything they need. The plants, animals, and microorganisms in turn 
help one another thrive. From plants providing us with oxygen to animals pollinating the land and keeping the delicate balance of our forests stable. There is a beautiful harmony happening all around us. Even with that harmony, even as we enjoy the bounty of our stunning planet, we still find ourselves looking up for answers, looking up for more. As we lay in the cool grass on a summer day or stare up at the sky after a night downtown or even take a simple peek out our window, we are mesmerized by the stars and we always have been. Astronomy is the oldest of the natural sciences dating back to antiquity. For thousands of years, humans and their ancestors have sat around crackling fires and looked up at the sky in wonder. There are cave drawings from the Paleolithic area depicting stars and temples dedicated to the sun and stars that are peppered all over the world. From Central America to the Middle East, there is comfort in our ancestral, innate desire to dream about what is beyond our own planet. That is why tonight we will venture into the far reaches of our solar system to truly see its beauty, mystery, and allure. Our journey begins far, far away from Earth. 67.8 million miles away, to be precise. Here, you find yourself floating peacefully beside Mercury, the closest planet to the sun. The sun shines to the left of you, a massive ball of hydrogen and helium that has been providing energy and light to the universe for 4.6 billion years. From here, it looks like nothing but a bright white light, a lamp hanging over the room that is our universe. It shines brightly, defiantly, almost against the black expanse of space. It is this light, this power and energy emanating from a star that provides us with everything we need to survive. And Mercury receives that energy as well. You glance down to the surface of Mercury and see a silvery gray planet. It almost looks like our moon and is, in fact, nearly the same size as Earth's moon. Mercury is a planet whose beauty can be found in the textures that rise and fall across its rocky surface. Every mile brings with it a new shade of silver, a new topography, a new cluster of landmarks. You float ever so slowly over this planet of mountains and valleys and craters. There are deep, bowl-like circles imprinted into the gray surface of Mercury. It almost looks as if it is an art project, a lump of clay with smooth fingerprints left behind. These craters and ridges are impressions left behind by meteorites over millions of years that have collided with the planet. Each individual crater came to be after a million mile long journey by these meteors. Heaps of rock, ice, and metals that have spiraled off the tails of a comet or fallen away from asteroids sailing through space. Mercury is peppered in these craters, 
its surface entirely sculpted by the will of the comets and asteroids all around it. As you fly over, you gaze deep down into these craters and imagine yourself in them. Can you imagine yourself staring up at the otherworldly peak of a tall gray mountain silhouetted by the white sun just behind it? Imagine the space dust shifting and dancing around your feet with every step you take. The tiny silver particles glistening in the sunlight, moving for the first time since they were scattered on the planet ages ago. Mercury is a planet of mystery and intrigue and has been so for centuries. It was named after the Roman messenger god who was known for being quick on his feet because Mercury is so close to the sun, about 36 million miles. It is only visible from the Earth's surface in beautiful, fleeting moments around twilight. Its quick and brief appearance was studied and revered by the ancient Romans, who often found themselves staring up at the sky like we still do to this very day. You take one last look at the craggy and wild surface of Mercury. Your eyes journey from plains of smooth rock and up and down through ridges of craters. As you bid Mercury farewell, your cozy pod smoothly makes its way to the next wonderful planet in our solar system, which is perhaps one of the most beautiful. You find yourself curled up in your soft blanket, sinking into your mattress as you look out of your window at Venus. Beautiful, thick clouds, yellow and white, whirl around the planet like oil spiraling atop a globe of water. This hazy blanket of clouds is eternal, a thick storm forever trapped within the atmosphere of the planet. The clouds are made of almost entirely carbon dioxide. Though they are beautiful from afar, swaying and twirling around the planet so smoothly, you would not want to journey within the tempest. Sulfuric rain pours from these heavy clouds down onto the surface of Venus almost constantly. Thick drops of rain cascade from the sky, persisting a rainstorm with no beginning and no end. You can practically hear the rain on the outside of your cozy pod just thinking about it. You listen closely and imagine each individual drop dancing across the roof and splitting until they begin to cascade down the window. You imagine the streaks on the window each drop will leave behind as they slowly course over the glass, melding with other drops and splitting off on their own as they make their way to the bottom of the window. You can hear the rhythm of the rain always falling and colliding in sync with one another, one of nature's finest symphonies, even on other planets. Beneath this brilliant haze and storm, the surface of Venus is an entirely different world. You can see small hints of a world below as you inch closer to the planet. The surface of Venus is a brilliant, rusty brown that is mountainous and breathtaking. Unlike Mercury, there are no craters on Venus. The storm in its atmosphere 
prevents any meteors from reaching the interior of the planet. Instead, what you will find on Venus is a landscape that rivals the mountains and valleys on Earth. Much of Venus is made up of vast, rolling plains of vibrant red soil. These plains stretch in either direction until they reach the mountains and volcanoes that are scattered across the planet. The mountains, some taller than Everest, seem to reach up and touch the cloudy atmosphere. They are covered in rounded domes and craggy features, all left behind by century-old lava flow. Plumes of smoke rise from cracks in the earth and dance up to meet the clouds above. Imagine yourself sailing through this landscape, shifting around the mammoth mountains, dipping down and running along the smooth basins of the plains and plateaus. Safe and comfortable inside your pod, you are not exposed to the true elements that affect Venus's surface. Because the clouds in Venus's atmosphere are so thick, heat is trapped on the planet. During the day, temperatures can reach 800 degrees, making Venus the hottest planet in the solar system, even though it is not the closest to the sun. We pull back from the surface of Venus and look, once again, at the brilliant atmosphere of the planet. The shades of white and yellow all flow independent of one another, floating around the globe in what looks like beautiful brush strokes. But there are a few dark spots to be found within those gossamers of color. These dark spots are chemically composed to absorb the UV light emitted from the sun. And some scientists believe they could be proof that microbial life exists on Venus. For a moment, consider how captivating the thought of life on Venus is. Imagine the microbial life shifting and surviving in the cosmic stew that is Venus's atmosphere. Venus has been a planet full of wonder since it was first discovered. Because of the makeup of the atmosphere on Venus, the planet reflects most of the light the sun provides for it. This allows Venus to be visible from Earth, resembling an incredibly bright star. It is also the origin of its namesake, the Roman goddess of beauty. It's hard to imagine that the very planet we can look up at today was beloved and admired by our ancestors thousands of years ago. We will forever be connected to those we have left behind by the stars that hover just above us. You look at Venus one final time, taking in the marbled colors and the splendor of its ever-present storm. If we were truly journeying linearly through the planets in our solar system, we would find ourselves at Earth next. However, it is not time for us to journey back home yet. There are miles to explore. There is stardust to entangle ourselves with. And there are other worlds to see. So, we will pass by Earth from afar, marveling at its collage of blues, whites, greens, and browns, as we continue our cosmic voyage to the next planet, Mars. Mars is the closest planet to Earth by millions of miles. 
and many people believe it is close to us in several other ways as well. From far away, Mars looks like a rusty red sphere. It shines brightly, contrasting with the black backdrop of space. But as your pod inches closer and closer to Mars, an entirely new type of planet reveals itself, a planet of breathtaking landscapes and shades of dark red, orange, and blacks. The reddish hue of Mars was painted across the landscape by a simple chemical reaction. Mars's crust is composed of mainly iron. Over time, that iron reacted with trace amounts of oxygen found in Mars's thin atmosphere. With that simple reaction, Mars was transformed from a gray planet to the stunning red planet it is today. You stare out as the reddish-orange planet comes closer into view. The color alone is marvelous, something that was admired by the Romans years ago, leading them to name the planet after their god of war. But as you near the surface, it becomes clear that nothing on the planet reflects war. It is a world much like our own. There are craggy, rocky cliffs that rise like monoliths from long, windy prairies of red rock. The mountains are mesmerizing, so much like our own, that it is almost unreal they can exist in such a foreign place. The mountains have tall peaks of burnt ember-colored stone and ridges that range from crimson to dark, muted brick tones. It isn't just the mountains that seem to reflect the topography of our beloved Earth. As you look over the vast expanse of the planet, you can see what looks like long, winding riverbeds, ravines, and basins. What you are looking at is a planet that has been carved by water over thousands of years. Mars was once home to oceans and rivers and lakes. For a moment, you look in the empty trenches and try to imagine the water coursing through the barren, red landscape. In the large basin below you, there would be an ocean much like our own, its blue water sparkling incandescently against the rusty ground. There would be rivers twisting and turning through the dry riverbeds, floating over rocks and cascading down mountains as misty waterfalls. But for now, Mars is a cold planet with no rivers or lakes or oceans to speak of. What little water remains on Mars is tucked away in its polar ice caps. Your pod makes its way up to the top of Mars, where one of its polar ice caps can be found. The white ice cap is strewn around the top of the planet in large ripples. Rounded arcs of Mars's red rocks pop out of the ice, reminiscent of the smooth rocks atop Everest. The swirling design of the ice caps is spellbinding, tumbling out from the center like a hypnosis spiral. The more you stare into it, the heavier your eyes feel, and the more the mattress underneath you cradles your relaxed body. The ice caps on Mars are composed of mainly ice and carbon dioxide ice, also known as dry ice. Night begins to fall on Mars as you float effortlessly around the polar ice caps 
and mountains. You gaze up at the sky where you see large, puffy flakes of snow. After sunset in the Martian night, ice droplets in the atmosphere cool rapidly, creating strong downward currents. These currents pull these cooled ice droplets towards the surface, creating microbursts of snow. The snow flurries above your head, cascading through the air almost identical to a snowstorm on our home planet. You focus on one specific snowflake as it twists and twirls its way down, 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 closer and closer to the ember-red surface of the planet. Only the snowflake doesn't make it. Snow rarely settles on the planet, but it falls from the atmosphere quite often. As swiftly as it began, the microburst has stopped, and only clouds in the atmosphere remain. There are many reasons scientists look to Mars with hope for humanity's future. The red soil and craggy peaks are a near reflection of the mountainous plains in Utah or Nevada. And though the climate of Mars is dry and cold, there is potential that can be found across the landscape. You begin to pull away from Mars. You watch as the mountains and valleys fade to nothing but swaths of color traced along a red backdrop. Still buzzing from Mars's wonder, you pull your blankets tight around you as you begin the journey to the next planet in our solar system. And this planet is one that is a challenge to miss. You see it from a distance as an odd, reddish, sand-colored orb. As you near the planet, you can see the colors revolving around the globe in dozens of strips, all moving at different speeds with different hues. This is Jupiter. It was created 4.5 billion years ago and is often considered to be the first planet formed in our solar system. The planet is made of breathtaking bands of color, like watercolors painted across a clear marble. The layers of color come in swirls, with eddying light and dark patches in every swath of color. There are bands of neutral sand and white, cozied up against vibrant bands of red that ripple into lighter colors like mountains rising against a clear sky. You can't help but watch in awe for a long moment as these hues billow around the massive planet in never-ending motion. These colors are gaseous clouds in Jupiter's atmosphere, an atmosphere that is 44 miles thick, full of storms and numerous chemical compositions. In fact, nearly all of Jupiter is made of gas. The planet has no solid surface. Instead, it has a core that is believed to be a dense liquid surrounded by a collection of hydrogen and helium gases. These gases make the planet one of the most beautiful in our solar system, one that is forever shifting and changing, like a painting that is always in motion. You find yourself feeling thankful that something so beautiful exists in our solar system. In reality, we have a lot to be thankful for when it comes to Jupiter. 
Jupiter is one of the major reasons why our solar system was able to form as well as it has. Being the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter has the strongest gravitational pull aside from the Sun. This means many asteroids and meteors that may have damaged other planets were instead pulled towards Jupiter. Jupiter is, in a way, Earth's shield, and we should feel comforted knowing that it is protecting us even though it is millions of miles away. Named after the king of the Roman gods, Jupiter has caught the eye of scientists and stargazers around the world, and not just because of the planet alone. Jupiter has 79 known moons. As you pull away from Jupiter in your pod, you can't help but look around at the silver moons orbiting around Jupiter peacefully. There is Io, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa, known as the Galilean satellites after their discovery by Galileo Galilei all the way back in 1610. But it is Europa that catches your attention the most. Europa is coated in splashes of color. The white surface is lined with cracks of red and blue. It is like a gently cracked egg, with lines trailing down around the edges in long, winding strokes. Europa has an atmosphere mainly composed of oxygen and has a crust made up of ice and water. The lack of craters and mountains on the surface are believed to be because there are oceans under the icy surface of the moon. Many scientists believe that life exists on Europa far, far away from our home on Earth. For now, that possibility will remain a mystery because there are more planets to explore. From Jupiter, you can already see the glowing rings of Saturn in the distance. And much like Jupiter, Saturn is composed of shades of sand, orange, and brown that whirl around the planet as cosmic storms circle the globe. The most prevalent of Saturn's colors is a stunning gold hue that comes from ammonia crystals in the atmosphere which create golden clouds. Saturn has no surface and is composed entirely of gases and liquids like the majority of the outer planets. The pigments of Saturn's clouds are incredible, but it is the rings that draw your attention. The rings are divided into seven sections, each made of ice and rocks from asteroids, comets, and moons. The rings circle the planet in a blur, each section ranging in opacity from a light golden haze to a thick golden band. These rings are kept in place by several of Saturn's 50 known moons, which are known as shepherding moons. These moons orbit between the rings, using their gravity to keep the rings in their perfect circular shape. As your pod dives through the rings, heading back towards the expanse of space, you look up to see the rings sparkle in the sunlight. The dust particles catch the light, illuminating the sky above you in a rippling pattern of gold and white. We find ourselves nearing the outermost planets, which also happen to be the coldest. Luckily, you are safe and warm in your pod. 
you nestle further into your blankets as you await the next wonder that will appear outside your window. When you see it, a sense of calm washes over you. Uranus is a blue, ocean-like planet, made primarily of ammonia, ice, and water. The planet shines with ripples of sapphire, azure, and cerulean blue. It looks like the universe's most inviting ocean, a planet that would rival even the finest fairy tale sea. You imagine yourself floating peacefully through tropical waves in an ocean of sparkling blue. You can nearly feel water brushing against your skin, the rhythm of the sea lulling you towards a restful sleep. But you will not find that comfortable ocean swim on Uranus, even if it looks like a magical place. Uranus is the coldest planet in the solar system, reaching minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit with ease. The planet also has the distinction of being the only in our solar system to be tilted at a 90 degree angle. Millions of years ago, a collision with a celestial body resulted in Uranus being permanently tilted on its axis. Even its brilliant blue rings, all 13 of them, orbit around Uranus vertically rather than horizontally. As we begin to pull away from Uranus, take a deep breath. Our journey through the solar system has been long and relaxing and we are nearing the final planet on our trip tonight. Neptune is affectionately named after the Roman god of the ocean. As the massive planet comes into view, it becomes incredibly clear how aptly named this celestial body is. Neptune looks like a globe encased by a vast, spinning ocean. Gossamers of white and light blue clouds wave against a dark blue planet. It is truly like looking at the Earth's oceans from space. The light and dark shades fade seamlessly into one another. The atmosphere whips up storms unlike any other in the universe, reaching speeds of up to 1,200 miles per hour. These storms eternally circle around the distant planet. In Neptune's atmosphere, one large moon shines brighter than all the rest. Triton, Neptune's largest moon, has a surface of condensed nitrogen that is so cold it is a frost, giving the planet a reflective, icy sheen. As you fly past Triton on your way back towards Earth, you can't help but marvel at all the wonders this solar system has to offer. From hot, arid planets composed of red rocks to icy moons covered in frost, the universe is a place of extremes and mystery. You curl up tighter in your bed as the planets pass before your eyes. You float by Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars until you find yourself heading towards Earth. The familiar blues, greens, and whites put your heart and mind at ease. To live on a planet so incredible in a universe so vast is one of the biggest blessings. As your pod comes in for a gentle landing and the mountains, rivers, and oceans inch closer and closer towards you, you feel your eyes growing heavy. 
This is home, and it is wonderful. I hope this journey into space has helped ease you towards a night of restful and relaxing sleep. If you enjoyed this, please feel free to join me tomorrow for another story. Until then, thank you for listening and sweet dreams.